No I donut. Was... We're not talking about donuts. No, no, we're not talking about the donut. Anyway, either way, but uh, maybe another time. All right. We, I, we have to get basic with this one. Okay, we're getting basic here. Yeah. Getting basic here in our ongoing <clears throat> conversation series with Father James Tochahara at uh, St. Mark's Church here in sweltering Denver, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. And today's topic, I mean, I never know what's, what's going to happen next. Um, <laughs> but uh, so if you'd like to introduce today's topic. Let's... So today's topic is the hidden power of the sign of the cross. Yeah. Maybe we should get it started right. Do we just one or? I'm, I'm oh, you could, three. You could do three. Yeah, three. yeah, we can do three. Okay. Actually, that does come up. Um, but... Uh, so the whole, point, the whole point of this one is, I think, because I've been seeing some people talk about the sign of the cross, and I think they missed some things. Mm. So we're going to try to bring in some more stuff, because uh, not necessarily to convince people that the sign of the cross is cool, but I think just to give them a, a deeper appreciation for it. It's all about appreciating it. Mm. It's not whether or not it's good to do or not good to do or whether or not you should do it. Um, obviously, we do it in the Orthodox Church. We do make the sign of the cross a lot, so, but we need to appreciate it, I think. Hmm. So, I think the first thing we should know about the sign of the cross is, well, is that it's actually the sign of the holy name of God. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, some people think, oh, you're making the sign of the cross. This reminds me of Jesus dying on the cross. So I'm a Christian, this is a cross, so if Jesus died on the cross, so this is, I'm, I'm thinking about Jesus. Hmm. And uh, that's not bad, that's true. I mean, Jesus obviously did die on a cross, and it's good to think about Jesus. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with any of these sorts of things. Um, but uh, it, is, it is a lot deeper than that. It's not just reminding yourself of Jesus' crucifixion. It goes, it goes much, much deeper. And actually, I think it gives you more of appreciation for the crucifixion when you, when you learn and when you know that the sign of the cross is actually the sign of the holy name of God. So, and it goes back to the Old Testament. It goes back to the Old Temple. It goes back to Moses and Aaron. And really, all the way back to the book of Genesis. You know. all the way forward to like 80s horror movies where people do the sign of the cross to ward yeah. off like vampires and stuff, right? Yeah, sure. And monsters. Yeah. Because yeah. I always used to think that was like, kind of like, oh, come on. Yeah. But now there's, there's something to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so, well, yeah. I mean, not to sidetrack you too No, much, no, 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 That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking about over here. Yeah, I think, um, uh, yeah, it's not, well, in the Old Testament, um, there are a lot of times when it, it talks about a mark or um, like the mark on Cain or uh, there's an angel in Ezekiel that's going around putting a mark on people mm -hmm. to say who's saved. Um, so you think, well, what is that mark? And, pretty, you know, the ancient Jewish sages all knew that it was, it was a cross, you know, because that is, that is the symbol of the name of God. The high priest would wear a cross on the crown of his turban um, when, he went into the, uh, when he went into the temple. The Jewish priest? The Jewish priest, Was yeah. wearing a cross. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, and he was probably making the sign of the cross over things um, that were to be sacrificed because that's kind of how you transfer um, God's name onto the sacrifice. That was happening before Jesus was crucified? There oh, was yeah. Crossing stuff? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Long time. So that's, that's, what we, that's, what, that's what we need to have more of an appreciation for. So we're not just reminding ourselves of Jesus' death. We're actually reminding ourselves of the presence of God in the temple more than anything. Well, why were they crossed? Like, what, what's then the symbolism of the cross prior to Jesus? The symbolism of the cross prior to Jesus was the name of God, was the presence of God. And so, I mean, like, you know, the Old Testament prophets are all talking about you know, uh, well, not just the prophets, but all over, it's, you know, save us, God, not for our sake, but for the sake of your name. Hmm. So that cross was the name that 
in a sense, God gives to the priesthood um, to represent him. So this is his name. So he's like, if, you, if you're marking something with that, you're saying this belongs to the family of God, or this belongs to God, really. So. Yeah, I'm still just stuck on how these, like this, like the, that's how deep this cross thing goes. Like it, yeah. it's, it, like is the irony lost on like Jewish people today? I, I don't understand. Oh, I think so. I don't think, I don't think Jewish people would necessarily remember that or think about that. I mean, I think the rabbis would know it. Um, you know, well, if they get into the old temple stuff, some of okay. them might say, well, there's no temple, so why bother with any of that? But I would think that they would, I don't know, they'd probably learn a little bit about that. But yeah, I don't, everyone has sort of decided not to talk about it. Um, it seems like Christians and Jews uh, have decided to sort of forget about what the cross actually represents. What does it actually represent? I mean, other than the name of God, like yeah. they understand, so this, this represents the name of God, but what is it about this action, yeah. this, the, this symbol, because it's a very physical symbol, right? It's yeah. up, down, and, and yeah. sideways. Well, is that well I think you know it's it's just like it's like a shorthand for for writing out God's name I mean like if you wanted to just make sort of a corporate logo so to speak for yourself and you just wanted to make a symbol and say well that whenever you see that symbol you're gonna say oh this is Doug or this is Melchizedek or this is James or this is something then you make up different little symbols and so that's all that is I mean that's really just God's name in a short quick symbol I don't know if it's related, you know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, no one really knows the complete origin of this because it's just been given to the Jews and, the, and then to the Christians from, since, you know, from the earliest time immemorial. But um, there is a, God's name uses four letters, the Tetragrammaton, the Y-H-W-H. Oh, wow. So, you know, you do kind of wonder if it's like a Y-H-W-H or something like that. Yeah. It, that that's, or there's just four points, Y-H-W-H or something. Yeah. Um, you know, that could be part of the origin of it. Um, like, why, why would that symbol, why not a circle? Why not a triangle? Why not whatever? Why, Mine would be why like a cross? Pear, like a pear-shaped <laughs> yeah, maybe. icon. I don't, I don't know what mine would be. I don't, don't want to think about it. But... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, you know, that might be something. That might be part of it. But uh, the most important thing is that, yeah, just that that's just the symbol for God's name and God's presence since we, we can't even remember when it really started. No idea. Other with Cain, maybe. Is that the first time we see it? But um, I don't know. And then also there are four rivers that come out of the throne uh, that come out of the tree of life in um, Eden. Mm. So maybe that looks like a cross. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the there's a lot they, of interesting things. Wasn't the way they set up the camp and the tabernacle, all that kind of thing, in the yeah. shape of a cross? Huh? Well, sort of issue. I mean, it was in a uh, square, because they'd have like three tribes on one side, three tribes, like on the north side, three tribes on the south side, three tribes on the west side, three tribes on the east side. So yeah. then you'd have 12 that way. But So that's kind of, that's another interesting thing. It could be related to that. Um, but the yeah, four corners of the earth. Like I guess, like what's really I don't summed know. up in yeah. this? But then symbol. it's not. It's not an earthly symbol. It's a. It's a heavenly symbol. So right. Okay. Yeah. So that's. I don't know. Yeah. How how far how far you could take it that way. But um, yeah, it is interesting. So when we make the sign of the cross, what we're really doing is putting God's name on our body and soul. Mm. And of course, we already have God's name on our body and soul from baptism. So we, we, are, we are in the household of God. We've been adopted by God, and we carry his last name. Um, and so whenever we do that, we're, we're sort of reiterating that, um, saying that we belong to God. So it's good because um, each one of us is a stone in the, that builds up the temple. And so we're, we each bless our own stone inside the, the new temple of, of God, which is the... Uh, disciples of Jesus. Whoa. Okay, say that again. So each of us is a stone in the temple of God. Okay, yep, right. Yeah. Yep. And so if we're blessing ourselves, we're blessing um, that stone that we are, you know. So if we all do it together, then we're all basically invoking the presence of God into 
the temple, which is the congregation. Wow. Yeah. Huh. But is it, I think that some people might look at that and say, well, this is all just magic. Yeah. Right? Like, what, yeah. you know, it's just, oh, well, you know, like, what does that do? Right? Like, what's, yeah. what's actually happening in the, you know, behind the veil, right? In the yeah. sort of reality we can't see well, when we're making the sign of the cross. I think when you live in a world that's, like, so full of atheism, it seems like magic. We, we, we can't tell the difference between... We can't make distinctions between religion and magic anymore because we don't, we don't even believe in anything. I think in this world, um, you know, so it's like we can't, our brains aren't equipped to understand that there's a difference. Um, but yeah, in this case, it works. It is magic. It's magic in the sense that it works, that if you do that, God does make himself present, you know. Um, but now magic would be, oh, if I make this sign, then, uh, you know, uh, that tree is going to fall down. You know, it's like it gives me the power to do something, you know, kind of extraordinary or sort of superhuman or whatever. God, um, give me a million dollars. Yeah, man. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go like this over a bank and then suddenly I'll have a million dollars or something. Money just starts flying out of the ATM. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sign of the cross. So that's magic. That's what magic is supposed to be, right? right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it's not magic. Um, and I think the best way to understand the the real religion of it, the real religious power, the spiritual power of it, which would look like magic to an atheist, um, perhaps, is, at least to put it in modern terms, scientific terms, is that it's a statement of identity. Uh, okay. So, and that, and that really is the most powerful thing in the world. Mm. I mean, for a human being. You know, if, if you know who you are, and you know that you belong to God, and you know that your life has meaning, and you know that God loves you, then, you know, you really can do anything. You can, you can die, you can, uh, you know, sacrifice yourself out on a battlefield or something, if it comes to that, you know, I mean, hmm. uh, like people had to do in World War II, or, you know, uh, or it can just steady your nerves, I mean, but either one, if you understand that you're really saying, this is who I am, and I am a child of God, and I belong to God, then, and this really is working, um, then, then, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an incredibly powerful thing, you know? It can't make you fly, but it can make you fearless. And if you're fearless, then, I don't know, you don't really need to fly. Man, that's some clickbait right there. Yeah. Can't make you fly, but it can make you fearless. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe you could use that. Sign of the cross. Can't make you fly, but it can make you fearless. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can see that. I'm still kind of learning. Yeah. Right. So, um, I and, found it's it's really it's just a one. You kind of got to get your own rhythm to it as well. Like you're yeah. kind of kind of yeah. got to find your own. Yeah. You have to. You just have to do it enough times, and I think do it with like I think the deepest appreciation possible. Okay. You know? So what's that appreciation based on? You've kind of talked about how it, it's ancient. Like this. This yeah. is this is a thing that's come to us from a long, I guess, a long history. Yeah. But where does that other sense of appreciation come from? From, like, how, how does that build? Well, I think, you know, it goes back to identity again. And okay. then it comes back into the, the present time. So it's an ancient thing, but we're still doing it, you know. Mm. Um, so we know who we are, and we know who our people are, you know. Mm -hmm. And Moses is part of my people, and so is Aaron, mm -hmm. and so is King David, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And so are Peter and Paul. And so is the Virgin Mary, and so is Jesus, and so is, you know. Um, but yeah, these, this is our history. These are our people, and this is where we belong, and this is who we are. So, you know, I mean, I think if you do it with that much of an appreciation, not just saying, oh, yeah, Jesus died on the cross. I think that mm. kind of, it's kind of like, yeah, we all know Jesus died on the cross. It's more like, this is who I am. Yeah, yeah, this connects me to uh, Adam and Eve, this connects me to Moses and Aaron, this connects me to David and Solomon. I mean, you know, this is, uh, and of course it connects me to Peter and Paul, because that is something that is true about Christianity, um, that the sign of the cross is there from the very beginning. I mean, super, super early, it's attested to. So it seems to, you know, I mean, if anything is an apostolic 
tradition, making the sign of the cross is, is an apostolic tradition. Now, if you think, like, no, it's just this superstitious thing about if I make the symbol of Jesus' dying over myself, then somehow I'll get, like, special prayers or merits or something up in heaven. Um, but, you know, that's, like, ridiculous uh, because the apostles wouldn't have thought that. The apostles would have known this is what the high priest does. This is what the high priest wears. Yeah. Of course, the Jewish version is an X, but a cross is a cross. In the ancient world, there was no, you could call it an X cross or a T cross, right. but a cross is a cross. There isn't so any the difference. Jewish version would be like boom, 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 boom? Well, yeah, on the high priest's crown, it was like a little X as well as the tetragrammaton. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what exactly, how exactly they would have used that, I don't know, who knows? I mean, that, you know, there's a lot of stuff of the temple that we just don't know. A lot of the first temple that was lost and never recovered, and then even more of the second temple or third temple, whatever you'd want to call them. Right. But, uh, huh. Yeah, so I think if people, if people understand that, then I think they have a much deeper understanding of who they are as a Christian, too, in that there is a, there is a continuation you know, I mean, the first Christians didn't think they were starting a new religion. They thought they were just pursuing the truth of Judaism, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure the apostles, you know, they're the same way, right? You know, they're just, they're like, oh, I didn't think this was a new religion. This is just our, our old religion, whatever, you know, you call it Judaism, fine. I don't know, whatever. Come up with a name for it, that's fine. But, yeah, this is just our, our old religion, and it's just, we're just, you know, creating sort of a, you know, a kind of updated version with the coming of the Messiah, obviously. Right, yeah. But um, it's still the same. I, I don't think they would have thought it was a different religion. And it's these sorts of things that have the continuation, you know. And, and we should be aware of them, too. Because that is the most, that is, that is one of the amazing things about Jesus being crucified on a cross. For everyone else, for all the other criminals who were, you know, or just rebels the people that Rome didn't like, everyone else who was crucified on a cross, it was just a cross. Hmm. But uh, when Jesus is crucified on a cross, he's, you know, it's like he's being sacrificed on an altar that, sh that has the same shape as the name of God that would have been used inside the Holy of Holies, you know. So that is, you know, when they saw that, they thought, whoa, no, that does make sense, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at first it doesn't seem right. Why would the Messiah, why would the King of Israel be be uh, killed like a common criminal, but no, on the other hand. Sacrificed on an altar, a cross-shaped altar that would have yeah. had a resonance with the temple worship of the, of the day. That's, yeah, yeah. I've never even heard about this till right now, so I'm, I'm kind of like a little bit mind blown on, yeah. the, on the whole thing, because it's, you're taking out of the context of Jesus died for me, right? Yeah. Which is obviously which is true. appropriate. Yeah, and that's fine. Into... Yeah. This is my identity. I identify yeah. with the name of God himself. Yeah. And I think that's interesting in a day where identity seems to be so important. Yeah. Right? It's uh, yeah. It's kind of an interesting answer to... People don't know who identity. they are. They think they're just um, an angry member of a group that's been victimized, you know. Um, and, and that's pretty universal in America, um, you know. The poor people are victimized, but then the rich people are victimized because mm. they have to pay such high taxes, and they're, and they're so victimized. And then, you know, black people are victimized, but so are white, white people. Oh, they've been aggrieved now. Everyone belongs to, in America now, everyone belongs to a group that's been victimized and that, you know, uh, their identity is, is that of a, of a victimized minority or maybe, maybe in some cases it's a majority, but it, <laughs> They're still victimized. Anyway, and it's like, you know, all that is fine in terms of politics. Um, that's what politics is kind of all about. You have to look out for your tribe, and that's all fine. But we all should be aware of our deeper identity, which is what we've been losing hmm. recently. And our deeper identity is that we are members of the household of God, members of the family of God. And... We, we all should claim our membership in this eternal identity of what a human being is, what a human being will be for all eternity, that eternal identity, you know, that, that will be true, for, eternal and universal. It's true for all people in all places, in all times, and will be true even beyond our lives 
beyond our deaths, uh, beyond the end of this universe, we will still have that identity as the children of God. And that will still be the, that is the eternal symbol for some reason. I don't know, we'll have to ask God when we, uh, when we go meet him. Say, hey, why the cross? And, you know, maybe you'll say, oh, you know, it's kind of like the Tetragrammaton. There's four points, and I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Um, just, it's like, well, no, there's just something really powerful about that in the, in the kind of fractal structures of the universe, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. It is a universal symbol. It is very interesting. It does mean something to us, you yeah. know, to human beings, even if we're not Jewish or Christian. People still, you know, see that as like a really basic symbol of something. So the appreciation of it, we've been talking about how I mark myself with the name of God, right? Yeah. But, you know, I find myself also doing the sign of the cross over other things, like, yeah. hey, camera, keep working, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Batteries yeah. don't die, whatever it is. You know, yeah. Like, there, is, is there a sense in which we can name other things with the sign of the cross, or... Oh, yeah, how does, definitely. How does it work when you sort of project it out? Well, when, I mean, you know, as a priest... I'm always making the sign of the cross over a lot of things. And, and it is interesting because you'll make, sometimes you'll make the sign of the cross Father, Son, and Holy Ghost three times. Well, that's just what, that's just what priests do. That's were. the priest version? Yeah, that's the priest version. The, what, what ver- I get this version? You get that version. I get this version, you yeah. get this version. Yeah. Or, uh, it, well, and some, I think you see a lot of Roman Catholics will like just have like two fingers and they'll dip it in holy water. And they do like it backwards that. though, don't they? Oh yeah, they do it backwards too. They're and it doesn't really it. matter. Who cares if you do two fingers or three fingers or whether it goes right, left, or left to right. I mean, if anyone's going to ask me, I'll tell them you should use three fingers and you should go right to left because that's what we do. Right. But uh, Do you want to explain yeah. this part though? Oh yeah, that being the Trinity. Yeah. The th- yeah. Well, that's yeah, right. so the three, three fingers for the Trinity and the two other fingers for the dual nature of Christ, human and divine. You know, and so then, yeah, that's how you make the sign of the cross. It's almost like we're made for this. It's like God made the human hand yeah. to, to be able to make the sign of the cross with that kind of symbolism. I know it's yeah. kind of dumb, but yeah. it, it well, almost starts to feel that way. Yeah, and I think that's good. And, I mean, we have to, you know, say, like, okay, we know that we're kind of projecting it back. But when it comes to religion, and this is the thing that I think people don't get about religion— Religion isn't about proving something. Religion isn't about logical thinking. Religion is about really claiming an identity and the power of that identity, you know. Um, And so if you want to say God made the human hand just to make the sign of the cross, it'd be like, yeah, that's that's what we believe. I mean, you know, can you prove somehow in evolution that the first time there were five digits on the, the limb of a mammal. Or, no, that's not the point. That's not the point about religion. You know, uh, it, this is for us to claim our higher spiritual identity. And it doesn't have anything to do with what you prove one way or the other scientifically, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which is something else. Um, wow. Yeah, I didn't expect you to go the identity route. That's really... Yeah. Well, it's like every time I talk to you, I have no idea where we're... I think we might go somewhere, and then you just go to this awesome new place that I haven't yeah. thought of. Yeah. Well, and every time you make the sign of the cross, it's like you're baptizing yourself, or recalling your baptism, or re-energizing your baptism, or getting whatever spiritual power there was in your baptism to come, wow, you're to come back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're really... You're sort of anointing yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. You're sprinkling yourself. You're cleansing yourself, and you're anointing yourself. Um, when I find there's this wonderful tension when I'm out in public or I'm at the grocery store, and something will come through my head, and I'm just like, oh, right. Mm. And you just find yourself crossing yourself in public, mm. or you know, you eat food at a restaurant or something like that. And there's there's a kind of a wonderful tension there, right? Yeah. Because people see that. Yeah. Right. They recognize what you're doing. Yeah. And they can't. I don't know, who knows? Who knows what they think? That's not the yeah. job either. But I think yeah. there's something important about that being public. That is, there is something interesting, I think, there. Because if someone else were to see that, they might say, oh, superstition thinks that there's some sort of magic in that. And um, it's like, no, it's not superstitious. There is something powerful in it. And it is uh, claiming the identity. Hmm. Claiming the identity of, you know, your father in heaven. You know, I mean, so that's the most powerful identity you can claim. And that's, you know, that's, that's real. 
you know, if you believe oh, yeah. that you're happy, then you'll be happy. I mean, of course, you know, there's, you know, there's kind of certain, you know, maybe limitations to that to a certain yeah. extent. But we know that from, from modern psychology that, you know, how you see yourself is extremely powerful. So, you know, this magic works, you know. I except mean, it's not magic. Except it's not magic. It's not magic. Yeah. But it's, yeah, but it, yeah. This spiritual power works. Yeah. Yeah. It can make you fly, but it can make you free. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There you have it. <laughs>